just a fair warning i do nerd out quite a bit on here with a bunch of numbers and a bunch of stuff about the pals and what they do and so on and so forth so if you want to get to the action part of this and showing the explosions and the fun stuff uh, just go ahead and fast forward to about nine minutes 50 seconds and you'll get there so be willy washed this is just to show that all of the damage modifiers on this are flat in other words this is what they come with um, the only thing that I really turned up on this was the XP on this old map. So today I wanted to talk about damage and how to crank it up to the maximum, not only with the pals, but with yourself as well. What we're looking at right here is a grid system that I lined up to show the pals up to the lower end and some of the higher end ones that you would need in order to then apply said elemental damage to your attacks you have cross stallion knocked which can be ridden as a fly mount chance changes the player's attack to dark and enhances dark attacks while mounted basically any of the neutral pals that you go against such as paldius is going to get shredded if you're on the back of it using a rocket launcher or shotgun or something something to that degree or an assault rifle when it comes to the damage modifiers you really want to go after the weakness there is no pal that boost neutral damage because neutral damage does not have nothing is weak to neutral what i should say but everything else has a weak point fire is water damage so fire is water damage dark is Weak to dragon, which the chillet applies dragon damage to your attacks while mounted. As a roby applies water damage to your attacks while mounted. So you get the picture. With all these right here, these are kind of the uh, other than Shadow Beak. Don't mind him. Um, these all apply a damage type modifier to your attacks. Now, with that being said, these guys are the guys that you're looking for when you're actually trying to buff pals that you're riding or fighting with to get their attacks up to unreasonable damage um specifically uh, i had done up some kelp seas and i have done up some hooker teas so kelp seas for water the kelp sea ignis actually does fire as well um the rubies do fire the hooker teas do dark i don't know how to pronounce her name but she she enhances Grass, the spark it enhances electric, fox sickle increases ice or applies, or yeah, increases the attack of ice pals. And then do mud increases the attack of ground pals. So the way that you would want to pair them is, all right, so there is one outlier. There is nothing that I know of that increases the damage of dragons. And since he is a dragon and ice type, they will work off of their sub their their subtype or their main type of damage that they do. So chill it does ice and dragon. If you really wanted to boost up the chill it, then you would just pair it with the fox sickle because it all it enhances the powers or increases the attack power of ice pals. The way that you would want to go about doing this is do do muds for Anubis, you do rubies or Kelpsy Ignises for ragnarok do icicles or foxicle or frost stallion or the chillet and then to upgrade beacon then you could use sparkets for dash what's her name the main thing though is uh what i want to talk about are specifically with the gob fins the gob fins are pretty interesting so the way that you would want to breed any of these, like basically damage modifiers with an increase to the actual animal is you want to have four of them to max out your effectiveness. You can do three, but you're dropping about 20%. If you four star or level five, their partner skill on the pals that are increasing the attack pals, attack power, essentially with hooker tees, and shadow beak we have our beast of a of a god shadow beak that we built and this is the old map unfortunately uh none of this stuff is going to save but it is what it is so shadow beak is a dark type so we put him in here he's doing a base of 1801 
Now with these, with uh, with a standard hooker tees, you're going to be getting about a 10% modifier. With Shadow Beak to increase his power, the the base power stat for them with nothing done to their partner skill. So the investment into the condenser would be 116 per, which averages out to be out of the all four out of all fours 464 pals that you would have to invest between those four so as you can see these guys are maxed out but these guys are not vanguard and stronghold are important vanguard increases the player's attack by 10 percent, and stronghold strategist increases the player's defense these stack so anytime that you're running an animal that you're trying or a uh a pal that you're trying to boost up the damage for then you kind of want to have these on with stronghold strategies and vanguard the other two are kind of up in the air pick what you want if you want to have mind forming on them as well to help you when you're mining stuff kind of have an all around um and then maybe motivational leader which helps out with your work speed which doesn't help with mining or cutting down trees those are log informing and mind forming they help specifically if you're building stuff if you really want to do that and you don't have an anubis it's good for early game base stats on these are going to be 10 percent per to add to this once you get them up to the partner skill which is a four star or level five partner skill as it shows there level five or four star or what i call maxing out the pal then you're going to get increases on each one of these so it's going to be 20 percent 40 percent 60 percent and then 80 percent so you're getting an extra 80 percent attack power just off of that so he's rocking at 85 percent attack power because i've got legend ferocious musclehead and lucky on him um i didn't do the dark thing because it's a 20 percent extra to dark damage specifically and i wanted to have him as an all around that's why i took and put that's why i put all these attacks on him so i've got solar blast which is grass hydro laser which is water clearly but you put all these on here and it doesn't matter what element type that you're using but it matters about which how that you're using their elemental type that they're bringing to the table so dark types are going to be increased all of the dark types will be increased even if their subsection is in, is dark increased by hooker tees. baseline zero stars 10 percent when they're fully upgraded it's 20 percent a piece so it's an extra 80 percent he's at 85 doing 100 1 1801 damage after we stack these boys up now he's doing 2581 him by himself will be able to run over pretty much anything you can do this with any type of pal though um the one thing that i wanted to specifically talk about was the gob fins being an increase to your attack power with my attack power as is, I'm at 20% passive because I have a... So the original attack pendant is only 5% and the blue one is 15%. So if you throw in some attack pendants, throw in a mind wipe, respect, and then throw in those gob fins, and if they all have vanguard on them, then you're getting an extra 30% per gob fin for your, your personal attack power. And that transfers over to weapons as well um the red guys do the same thing when activated attack yada, yada, yada. the thing is at the bottom right there while in team increases players attack power these guys same thing it is what it is but i have each one of these with vanguard and stronghold strategists and the other stuff i really didn't care it was just what i got with what i got so we'll stack these boys up and i'll show you some stuff that you can do because of this we can throw on as a roby and now our weapon is now doing water damage anything that's fire such as old blazemut is pretty much dead in one shot with this setup in particular and i'm going to show that it can be done with a regular rocket launcher like i put standard weapons on so if you even have like a slight upgrade then you're automatically going to be doing a lot more damage i, I one shot them with this rocket launcher I haven't tested with this rocket launcher, but I'm assuming that I will. All right, we have Blaze of Mud there. Standard rocket launcher. Nothing fancy. Standard rockets. 
We're riding on her with the gob fins. Like I said, right now, we are at 250% passive because I also have Vanguard on the Azerobi. Azerobi is rocking Vanguard, Musclehead, and Dainty Eater. So I just grabbed whatever one was good and maxed her out with her player, uh, with her partner skill as well, which is 116 investment into the Consolidator. Milkshake machine, for lack of better words. But yeah, so we'll show this. Blaze a mutt. Boom. One shot. So what you're thinking right now is Blaze of Mud's not really on the high end of stuff. How does this work? Or how well does this work against the top tier bosses, such as the against Frost Stallion or Jet Ragon, as I call them? Jet Ragon! Or how does it work against Paldius and Necromus? It works incredibly well. Um, and we'll demonstrate those as well. Jet Ragon is Dragon. And he is weak to dark, no, ice. Now this Frost Stallion isn't even maxed out with her partner skill, it's just level three. Now you won't be able to one shot Jet Ragon, but you will be doing a significant more amount of damage than you usually would. Again, she's showing that it's a regular rocket launcher at 10,000 attack. There is a way to uh, one shot him and I'm not gonna cheese him, but if you were to frost spike him and you could do this with any of the bigger bosses as well, you won't be able to catch them, but you can f frost spike them and then hit them with the rocket launcher and it just nukes them. I don't know why it does that, but we'll show how much damage he does here. As you can see, pretty significant amount of damage. And this thing will keep him juggled for a while as well. I didn't even hit him directly with it that time. That was a direct hit. Belly shot. And just like that, he is dead. Oh no, I got the, f <laughs> I'm gonna have to see if I, oh man. This is such a sad day because I got the schematic that I had been looking for off of him for a while and he drops the rocket launcher schematic. That's kind of poo poo. You know, what? we'll try to make it save. I doubt that it will, but you know what? We'll try. We'll take Ragnahawk, which does have a five-star partner skill or four-star partner skill level five, maxed out. Um, Flame Emperor, Runner, Swift, and Vanguard. Vanguard is the more important thing for this. If you really wanted to, I'd probably run some defensive stuff. That way the uh, actual pal will survive a little bit better, a little bit more survivability. Okay, once again, standard rocket launcher. Now we have Frost Stallion, and we're back on the back of a Ragnarok. All of our gob fins. Whoops.
And just like that, Frost Iron is dead. We're going to use Frost Iron Noct to go after Pautius and Necromus and show how well that this works. Now, there is nothing to her partner skill, but you can imagine maxing it out will give you a large advantage with the Gobfins and while riding on her. Uh, alternatively, you could ride on a Hell Zephyr, which applies dark damage as well, but the Frost Eye Noct, I mean, if you take your Ragnarok and go get a Frost Eye in, it don't take two seconds to breed up and get a Frost Eye in Noct, and usually if you got some half-decent stats, then they will transfer over pretty easily. So yeah, if you want to get Frost Eye in Noct, all you need is a Hell Zephyr. Breed with the Frost Eye in. All right, we have Paldius and Necromus again. Standard rocket launcher, just showing that I have that in my hand. And we'll go after Paldius first with the first hit. Now, Necromus isn't going to be taking too much damage from me. So there is Paldius dead. And even with Frost dying gone, he's not that big of a deal. I am, however, overweight still. But you can just keep them juggled with the rocket launcher in general, but it still does a lot of damage even off of them. Ugh. And there's Necromus, dead. We ended up losing the Frost Stallion knocked in the midst of that. It was a lower level, 47. Uh, so she's not fully leveled up yet. She got molly whopped pretty good. But yeah, as you can see, solo victory with a standard rocket launcher. And I've used the same rocket launcher. I didn't go back and repair or anything like that. And however many rockets I started with, that's what I'm left with. And that was killing all three of the major, or all four if you count, Paldius and Necromus. <laughs> now I got to do this all on foot. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you guys know what to do. And if you guys want to see another combat video where I show off the specifically to demonstrate the Hookertes and Shadow Beak, or how basically those animals or those pals can upgrade the damage on those and do a lot more, then by all means drop a comment down below and let me know. And we'll, uh, we'll post that video soon. Keep you willy-washed.